If you're like most people, computers are becoming a part of your life, and it helps to know how they work. They seem complicated inside, but by understanding just a few parts, you can see a simpler side of computers. You've seen them. They come in all shapes and sizes, but work pretty much in the same ways. In fact, if you could look inside these computers, they'd have the same basic parts. It's these parts, the hardware, that do a lot of the work in computers. To explain, let's look at something you already know, a house. One of the great things about living in a house is that you have room for all of your stuff. In fact, many houses have basements that become the perfect place for storing things you want to use later. And the bigger the basement, the more you can store. The same thing is true for computers. Instead of boxes and bicycles, we need a place to store things like photos, music, documents, and software. In a computer, it's not the basement, but a hard drive. A computer's hard drive is where you keep all the things you want to use later. And like basements, the bigger the hard drive, the more you can store. But basements aren't perfect. Going to the basement takes too much time whenever you need something. Closets on the main floor can help. They're small and make things easier to access when you need them. You don't need to go all the way downstairs. It's the same with computers. Some of the information stored on computers is hard for the computer to open quickly because it needs to take the long way. To solve this problem, computers use RAM, or Random Access Memory. It makes information easier for the computer to access. This means RAM makes computers faster. Plus, this kind of closet gets cleaned out every time you restart your computer. Of course, houses have all kinds of parts that need to work together. It would help to have someone like a butler in the house, making sure the house is always in working order. If it's too hot, maybe the air conditioning needs adjustment. When it's dark, lights are needed. Computers need this too. Something has to make sure all the parts run smoothly. In computers, this is called the processor. It's a tiny part that's like the butler of the computer. It sends and receives information, completes tasks, and puts the software to work. And the faster it can complete tasks, the faster your computer will be. So, let's review. The hard drive is like a basement. It stores all the things you need for later. RAM is like a closet on the main floor. It makes some information quick and easy to access. And the processor is like having a butler around, always completing tasks and making things work together. The next time you use a computer, think about what's happening under the hood. Computer hardware is working together to help you get things done. If you think about it, we are surrounded by networks. For example, when you step off the curb and onto the street, you're suddenly connected to a huge network that goes almost everywhere. But roads are only one example. Behind the walls of our homes, there are wires that connect and give our home electricity. And a type of network that we rely on more each year is the computer network. Let's take a closer look. We'll start small. If you use a wireless internet connection in your home, it's a kind of network. But the real power of networks comes when multiple computers connect and communicate. Think about a small office. Everyone has a computer with information on it. Alone, a computer is powerful. But as part of a network in an office, it can share information with all the other computers. This is called a local area network, or LAN. Here, each computer or device is a node, and the links between them are connections, and every network is different. Some computers on the network may connect to a single cable. Others connect to each other to share information. But the most common network these days uses a single resource as the hub for all the connections. And for these nodes and connections to work, they need rules. Consider our street example. To keep traffic moving, everyone needs to obey the speed limit and go at green lights. In computer networks, the rules that help computers talk to each other are called protocols, and they allow networks to connect to other networks, even over phone or cable lines that cover huge areas. For example, Multiple business or university networks can connect and communicate just like office computers. Extend this idea further and the network becomes the internet, a worldwide resource with nodes, connections, and protocols that keep traffic moving. This means when you connect to the internet, your computer becomes a node on the network and has access to millions of other nodes around the world.
Each new web page you visit comes from a specific node on the network that's designed to communicate with your computer and every other computer on the network. It's a network of networks. So, you can see that networks are everywhere, and they all have a lot in common. These days, whether you're on the road or online, the question is, where is your next destination? It's easy to think of computers as just machinery, buttons, screens, and parts that work together. But the magic of computers comes from something that makes them unique to you. The problem with computers is that most of us don't speak their language. We need a translator, something that can understand our needs and put the computer to work for us. The translator is called software, and it makes computers useful. Look at it this way. Like a typewriter, a computer without software is just a lifeless machine. By adding software, the computer becomes more alive, easy to use, and built for you. Most computers have two basic kinds the operating system, and software programs. If you've ever used a computer, you've used an operating system. From saving files, to using a mouse, or fixing problems, the operating system covers the basics. Operating systems come with all new computers and do a lot of the same things. You've seen them called Windows, Mac, and Linux. But the operating system is only part of what we need. To make them personalized and more useful, we can add software programs. For example, if you need to edit a photo, you can add a software program that is built for that purpose. If you need to design a house, you can add a software program that lets you see the house from all sides. By adding and removing software programs, you can make the computer fit with exactly what you want to do. And adding most software programs is easy. You can get them from a computer store or download them from the internet. No computer nerds required. Once a program is on your computer, opening it is as easy as clicking an icon. But what is a software program? What's really happening when you open one? Think about it this way. Computers are really good at following instructions. And a software program is essentially a set of instructions that tells the computer exactly what to do. When you open a program, the computer goes to work, completing the instructions until the program is ready for you to use. The ability to add and remove software programs means that everyone's computer can be different and unique to them. So, to review, we've talked about operating systems that take care of the basics and software programs that make computers personalized. It's this combination that makes computers so useful. But it's not limited to computers on your desk. Consider your cell phone. Just like a computer without software, it's a lifeless machine that doesn't speak our language. Thankfully, cell phones have software that bring them to life. The same thing is true for many cameras, music players, and even our cars. Every day, we rely on software to bring machines to life and make them personalized and useful. The next time you use a computer or cell phone, think about software's role in translating your needs into instructions that put the machine to work for you. These days, computers seem to be so smart and sophisticated. But really, computers only do what we tell them to do. The question is, how do our ideas get translated to the computer? Part of the problem is that computers can only understand machine language, which is made of only ones and zeros, lots of them. We can't really communicate in machine language, so we need a way to write our instructions for the computer. These instructions are what we call a programming language. It's something people write using words and symbols that tell the computer exactly what to do. Once written, the programming language is turned into machine language so the computer can understand the instructions. Like normal languages, programming languages look different from one another, but they're all based on a few simple ideas. Here's an example. Let's say that we need to tell a computer how to control an oven. To make it work in a programming language, we'll have to account for every situation. First, the computer needs basic rules. In order to control the oven, we need the computer to ask, is the oven connected to the computer? Does the oven have electricity? Is the oven turned on? We tell the computer to check these things through a programming language. It goes through each question one by one until all the requirements are met. 
With the rules in place, we need to give the computer a way to make decisions about what to do in various situations. For example, we need the oven to warm to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and stay at that temperature. To do that, the computer needs to check the temperature and adjust the heat automatically. Using our programming language, we can give it instructions by asking, is the temperature below 300? If yes, then turn up the heat. If no, then turn down the heat. Using statements like this, we can account for all the situations a computer may encounter, one by one. The computer simply steps through the list and is always asking, what's next? When you use a computer or device, countless statements like these are telling the computer exactly what to do in fractions of a second. And that's the challenge of programming computers, accounting for thousands of situations in the most efficient way possible. When programming is done well, it can turn computers into powerful tools that are capable of solving complex math problems, connecting people around the world, and even getting those cookies just right.